Hey, it's Annie and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be good. So I am doing a reaction video to a celebrity Hollywood makeup artist. So Matthias for, from Matthias for Makeup, he has a makeup channel here on, on YouTube, reached out to me and asked me if I was interested in doing a collaboration. I said, yes, absolutely. So we started chatting over on a Zoom call and decided that a reaction video would be really, really fun. So that is what we're going to do today. You're going to actually see me apply my makeup and I'm going to give you my thoughts on some of the tips and, and things that he's sharing. And he's going to go through one of my videos and um, maybe roast me. I don't know. <laughs> it's all good, girl. I can take it. So before we get started, let me tell you a little bit more about Matthias. So Matthias Allen is the only professional working makeup artist in Los Angeles. With over 20 years experience in the entertainment industry that he also has a YouTube channel which you're seeing here he features women of all age, ages nationalities skin types his resume includes dozens of celebrities as well as his 10 years as a lead makeup artist for the e-television on the iconic shows such as the fashion police with Joan Rivers find the beauty on YouTube is a pro makeup artistry channel all about educating and inspiring his viewers on how to use specific products and detailed step-by-step -step tutorials featuring all types of models and personal clients he wants to help his fans achieve the celebrity red carpet ready appearance and he's been perfecting throughout his career. Other than the hours you can spend learning just by watching Matthias for makeup on his YouTube channel, he also offers one-on-one -on -one video streaming, private tutoring, which is personalized to fit your needs without us ever leaving the home. Matthias can mentor your face to face at your own computers, teach you how to enhance your look, teach you how you can use the thousands of dollars you already invested in your makeup collection but still don't know how to apply it to your best ability, and you can register for that private beauty squad via his website. I will leave all the details below for you guys so you can check that out along with his channel. So after you watch my video, I encourage you to go on over to Matthias's channel, watch his video. Please let him know that you are following from my channel. Make sure you give him a like and subscribe to his channel. So let's get on with our video. But back to the topic at hand, you know, it is definitely a different way to do makeup and lighting and on this kind of a camera set up you need to go much heavier and you can put on the lashes that look gorgeous in a photo but then in real life they look kind of full like there's a little tiny animal sitting on people's eyes I've seen and met some of the biggest social media influencers at beauty events and in person it's totally different than it is actually on their social media. What you need to consider is that on social media, you're looking at the image most likely on your phone, on a handheld device this small. You're not looking at the image on the wall. You're not looking at the image in a magazine, which is like 9 by 11. That I agree with. And, you know, when I'm under lighting too, I it's really challenging because I don't ever want to do over the top, I don't do over the top makeup anyways. But you have to, I have to be careful because when you're under lights, I might think that I'm not putting on as much as I actually am. But the thing for me is I don't ever want to look different in real life. Like if you met me, I want you to see what I look like when I'm on my channel. Do you know what I mean? I, I think there's, I think a lot of times you see people, and I've shared this in other videos, I've done other reaction videos before, where you see somebody and they put all this makeup on, but hours later they probably don't look like that. Their skin is still not flawless because we all have pores, but with lighting and some makeup applications, you can make your skin look pretty smooth. But nobody has perfect skin, and it's not going to be like that all day unless you're constantly touching up. That's another reason I don't like to wear a lot of makeup. I live in Florida here, so the more product I put on my face, the more chances I'm going to have to be touching up all damn day. And I just don't want, I don't want to be bothered with it. I don't, and I just don't think it looks good after a while either. Right now we're all wearing masks, so I'm going to tell you most of the time I don't even wear makeup. Sometimes I do like half my face, sometimes I don't even bother because I'm wearing sunglasses. Nobody's going to see me with sunglasses and a mask on. But before the mask thing, 
you know, I would wear makeup, but I would just always go on the lighter side. That's just, that's just how I am. That's how I feel comfortable. So, but just know that it's not always reality when you see somebody on social media and they're looking a certain way with their makeup off. Nobody has flawless skin. Nobody has flawless makeup. All, they don't. It's just a photograph. Some people use different filters on their phone. I don't. The only thing I will do is I will lighten up an image if, if my room is too dark when I take a photo. That is the only thing I do. I don't face tune myself. I try to do a lot of shots of me in front of a mirror because I hate my phone. My phone has a built-in filter. So if I take a selfie, I'm going to get a very blurred out look on my face and I hate it. I really do because it's not what my skin looks like. I also don't like selfies because it makes my nose look bigger so I just don't like that either it kind of when you use the selfie mode it just exaggerates everything on your face especially when you have an HD camera it just exaggerates everything and then it just makes you feel bad about yourself at least it does for me even with the filter I don't like it so I always try to do a photo in front of a mirror but I never ever use a face tune or color tune I don't I don't tune my face at all what you see is what you get honey I don't I, I personally don't agree with face tuning it unless you're going to be honest with people I think because some people don't realize it I know some people might think well everybody knows it some people don't and I think if anybody does it I think they should just say this is a picture of me but it's been face tuned maybe even show before and after because I think that it it makes people feel like crap about themselves because I think I can't I'm doing all these makeup tips I'm doing all the stuff they're telling me but I look like crap all the time but you don't look like crap you're trying to compare yourself to something that's not even realistic. Do you even remember what magazines were? How many, how many of you out there remember what a magazine is? And I say all this to say that there are different techniques for doing makeup for day or real life as opposed to Instagram over the top fantasy beauty. And I'm going to show you here on my channel because that's what I do here at Find the Beauty. I take real women into my makeup chair here in Hollywood. That is something I really appreciate about his channel too. He doesn't just use models on his channel. He uses actually, actually, he uses actual real everyday ladies in his videos. And I really appreciate that because he could just go get models, beautiful models. I've seen people do that. Even at older women, you know, then they put all this makeup on, they look amazing. Well, yeah, they're a model. Okay. But he actually uses everyday real people. And I really appreciate that show you step by step exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to show you right now on a model showing you two different looks, how to do makeup for real life as opposed to how to do makeup for an Instagram photo shoot. Okay, here it comes. So hydrating or priming the skin is key no matter who you are because it helps your complexion products glide on even better. Quickly, he's going really fast here. I already prepped my face. I always use a moisturizer on my face. I always do skincare every single morning. You should have a skincare routine. It's important whether you're wearing makeup or not, but when you're wearing makeup, it's really, really important too because you want to prep your face. You don't want to have dry, patchy face and then put makeup on top of it because this is really going to look bad, girl. Okay, so you always want to make sure you're prepping your face. I've done videos on that. If I remember, I will try to pop one up there. So one of the things that I always do before I start, before I do my makeup, is I always make sure I use a moisturizer. I use a Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. That's what I'm using. This is the Magic Cream Light. I have the other one. I like that one still as well. That's part of my morning routine, and then I use this. You don't have to have both. You don't have to have either. Use what works for you, but this is just what works for me. A lot of makeup artists, including Matthias, will use a silicone-based um, primer and one of the reasons is that if you have a lot of lines and wrinkles it will just kind of filter that out a little bit so then when you apply foundation on top of it it's it's going to give a more smoother look I don't feel like I need to do that so I don't do that um, and I just don't like to use silicone base because I just feel like I can get breakouts from it but you know you do what works for you but I like the fact that he's prepping it now he's going in with a foundation I'm going to do the same now you notice he's using a brush I want to use a beauty blender for me if I use a brush. For me, it just looks streaky on me. I just feel like it's, I just feel like I'm just constantly just trying to get rid of all the streaks. And I just like the look of it pushing the foundation, pushing into my skin. So I'm going to go in with my Anastasia foundation. 
This is the Luminous Foundation, and I'm going to go along with, I'm going to actually start applying this first, and then I'll pop that video back on because he is fast. <laughs> Now for foundation, if I'm working in real life, I tend not to be as heavy handed. I make sure that the foundation glides really softly and airbrushed into the hairline. I also use the appropriate concealer to spot correct any imperfections on the face. I don't smear concealer heavily all over the face like 99% of YouTubers do. I also like to use liquid glowing potions and I like to melt them in. So let's go on to that. So let me just stop before we get into the highlighter. So I don't use, I do use a con concealer under the eyes. It doesn't look like he did that though. So I'm going to just go ahead and stop and do that under my eyes. So maybe I missed that. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use my Sicily under eye, conce under eye concealer. Sometimes when I go to squeeze it, there's like a little that comes out. Do you get the little Let me know in the comments. So I'm just going to, why do I feel like, oh. I, I thought my eyesight was coming because I had it on the wrong side. I thought it was getting worse. <laughs> now, I know that this model, by the way, in this video is, is younger than me. The reason that I, I chose this, though, is because I like the topic. And even though he's using a younger model, a lot of you guys watch videos and they're younger women doing it. I just wanted to just show you that. Makeup looks differently on somebody that's younger as opposed to somebody that's a little older. I have to share something with you before I go in any further that Matthias had told me. One thing that Matthias mentioned to me, and he, I believe he said it in a conversation to me, and I believe he also said this in a video, is that, you know, we all have lines and wrinkles under our eyes and we have things going on. Nobody's going to stare, you know, be close in your face and all that. And, you know, we shouldn't worry about all that. And if your makeup kind of shows a little bit of a little bit of creasing or something, not to freak out so much. And I understand what he's saying. He's saying most people are going to see your face, but I see it. So it bothers me. I don't want to see the underlying creasing and stuff. So I guess what I'm saying is I do, when I do my makeup, I do it for myself too. And I think it's important to do it for you, for you and what makes you happy. But, um, I just... I care about that. I don't want to see that. It, it would just drive me crazy because I'm sort of a perfectionist. I hate it. Okay. Oh, he was saying something about the glow. All right. So let me get, I'm going to get this one actually. I like the one from Charlotte Tilbury. There's two that I like from Charlotte Tilbury. So one is the Hollywood Flawless Filter and the other one is the Spotlight. I love both of these. I think they're really, really beautiful on the skin. So he's putting the, the shine, which you can see, I already have a shine, so I don't really need to add to that. Um, but he's adding the shine up here. I have sebaceous hyperplasia up there, so if I put any kind of a shimmer on there, all those little bumps, and you, I'm sure you could probably see, all those little bumps there are going to stand out more because they're going to be highlighted. It's going to, you know, the light's going to reflect on it and it's going to show more. So whenever you're using a highlighter, just keep that in mind when you're using a highlighter that anytime you put it on any, any areas like that, it's going to reflect the light and you're going to draw more attention to it. Just like I don't put a highlighter at the tip of my nose because, honey, I don't really want attention there. I like to put it right here because I feel like my face fell. <laughs> I know. feels like my face fell. I don't have, like, cheekbones like this. Okay, I don't. I don't know if I ever really have, but... It's more so now that I'm older, I think. So I like to put the light up, reflected up here. So let me show you. So I will go up here with my highlighter like that. Then I will take my sponge and I will blend that in. Now be careful if you have lines because it's just going to highlight it more. Unless that doesn't bother you. But do you see how the light is reflecting on that compared to that side? I have a little bit of glow. But this kind of kicks it up a notch. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Just put it right there at the side like that. And then I will blend it in. So that's something that I don't do. I'm not going to do what he's doing all over her face. She's young. She 
Looks like she's got a perfect forehead with no bumps or anything, so you can do that. ...to the skin and make them become one with the foundation rather than use a glowing powder on top. Now, I do like working that into the skin before I set with a translucent loose powder. And I use a brush because a brush is going to put that on much softer and it's going to look more natural than if you wet a dampened beauty sponge and then dip that into powder. Interesting. So he didn't talk about the blush or or bronzer or anything like that so that's interesting let me watch a little bit more before i powder okay so he didn't really talk about in this video as far as blush and everything so i'm just going to do that first because before i powder i have to make a decision right now i have to decide either to use all powder or i have to decide to use a liquid or a cream i'm going to do a cream today so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to use my um chanel bronzer and I'm going to put my Chanel bronzer right in this area right here. I don't contour. I just don't agree with contouring unless you're going to be under lights um, filming, which I still don't do contour doing that. But I mean, if you are under light, you're going to have your photos taken or something like that. I can understand using contour, but for everyday life, honey, no. I believe that Matthias <laughs> agrees with that. There's two different kinds of makeup. There's transformational makeup, which you do highlighters and, and you use, you know, contouring and do all that. And then there's just everyday makeup. And I just like to warm up my face. Now, when I go in with a cream bronzer, then I'm gonna go in with a liquid or a cream um, blush. I'm going to go in with my Daniel Sandler. This is a watercolor blush. I'm just going to put a couple drops in the back of my hand after I shake it up. And then I'm going to go in and I am going to use, what one do I want to use? I think I'll use this brush, my Refer 18 brush. And then I'm going to tap it right here, the top part. I'm going to wipe it off a little bit because this picks up a lot of color. And I'm going to just Blend that in. See how that looks there? Gives that nice little glow. I'm going to do the same thing here. I like to keep my blush at the top. I don't like to go up the rosy part of my cheek. Because when I'm not smiling, it just draws my face down. And I, I need to lift it up, girl. I'm going to add a little bit of powder. Here's the thing with powder. This is how I feel. I feel like if you have really, really dry skin, I personally wouldn't recommend powder if you have really dry skin. I think you have to be careful with it. Makeup artists are always going to tell you to powder no matter what, but I don't know. I just feel like if you have really dry skin, you have to be careful. I'm just going in with my Chanel powder, and I get it on my brush, and I just kind of tap it in first, and then I will buff it out. Now, when working on set or for a client who is going to be on the red carpet, I like to keep the eyes really simple. A little bit of glow or shimmer on the lid is great, but don't pack on 10 different shades of color. It's not necessary. And a waterproof mascara is great if you have wonderful lashes. And for brows, I don't like to use anything like a pomade or a pencil. If he mentioned that he uses a powder for during the day. I just find that powder... Um, brows because I have done it in the past. It is a way you could do it. It is really natural looking. Looks really nice. Um, I don't have much brows going on here. So I know he doesn't use a pomade during the day, but mama's got to because I don't have any brows. So I'm just going to do a really, really quick brow for you. I'm using my Chanel brow pencil and I'm following out my brows. One thing that I feel like can age us sometimes, this is just my personal opinion, but everybody do what? You feel. I feel like if my brow, see how little my brow is? I just feel like if my brow is a little bit fuller looking, I just find it to be more youthful than if my brows are too thin. Where Matthias is at, I just want you to see the difference between that eye and that eye, to see the difference between my brows. So brows are really, really important. Now I don't have lashes on. I really want to wait till the end of the video to do that, but even with lashes, I just feel like 
that's not enough eye color for me. So I would never just go out with just a little shimmer on my eyes. Some people can totally pull that off with some lashes. The brow hair is in really good shape. I just like to use a powder. Now for lips, I love liquid lipsticks, but one of my key tricks is using a lip brush because if you just use the wand, it goes on 10 times heavier, which is perfect for Instagram photos, but maybe not for real life. And a simple sweet pop of blush on the apples of the cheeks is really all you need to keep it realistic. You know what I like? I really like her red I really like her red lipstick. I might switch it up at the end of this video and show you the difference between this and doing a different eye look with the lips, but we'll see how heavy it gets here. Let me see. Instagram glam. Okay, for Instagram, you really need to pump everything up. If you're gonna be doing makeup for a YouTube video, the lights are 10 times brighter, and you need to really amp up the glow, amp up the lashes, amp up the eyes. Everything needs to be a little bit more over the top. Now, without retouching, this is what it looks like in real life, and let's get into how to create this look. So when you see people putting concealer on their lid after their eyeshadow is already done, that's because they are erasing any color that's on the lid so that then the second or third eyeshadows that they place on the lid, like the glitter or the sparkle. So this is what I do. I know I see people doing the cut crease and all that, but let me show you what I do. I just use a really light shadow. So I'm going to use this shadow. And like I said, what that does it just creates a solid backdrop so a color on top of that is going to pop but i just take one that's white now obviously if you use a color like he's showing obviously it's you're going to get more of a pop than this this is just what i do so we're just doing this today but if you want to you can go ahead and take a concealer and you can do that cut crease in there. The shadows are gonna pop that much more because you've basically blanked out that entire surface. Now, another thing that I like to do is use a cream shadow in the crease so that when I go in with my really strongly pigmented eyeshadows like this deep eggplant brown, it jumps onto the skin and it just becomes so much more saturated in color. Now, I still have to blend out the corners and I still have to blend out he is using, Matthias is using a cream shadow. I'm going to go in with this one, Coco. So I'm going to use Coco. I'm going to use it right here. He's going kind of fast here, so I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take that. I feel like I put too much on there. I'm just going to keep it on the end here, and I'm going to bring it up now. Something that I notice that Matthias does, but I don't do it, and this is just my this is just my personal opinion and preference, okay? So I notice that he goes up way high with the color, like way up here. And I personally just don't like my color way up there. I also am not hearing him say anything about a transition color. So I don't know if he doesn't call it a transition color, if he's not using a transition color. And I will be honest with you, before I started YouTube, I never did a transition color. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the color Spider right here. I'm going to go and put a little bit right here. And then I'm going to apply it and then blend it. But like I said, I don't like to add, I don't like to add color up there. I don't like to get a highlighter. I noticed Matthias, and I've seen some other people too that will put a, a highlight color there. I don't like to do that on me because I just feel like, I feel like if you have some skin like I do, I feel like my eyes look puffy there. It's just the way my eyes are. I just feel like it brings that out more, and I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want the attention to be there. I just don't like that. Um, so I don't use a highlighter. If I want to use a highlighter to lift a little bit, I'll put a little bit of highlighter right there, just a tiny bit. But I don't put it all in this area above my eye. I just don't like that look at all. I just find it to be aging on me, and I just don't like that. So I love that Matthias uses real women in his videos. He doesn't use models in his videos, although he... He pro I guess he has used models, he maybe he's used models, but most of the people that I see look like just everyday people, which I really, really appreciate. I love that he gives one-on-one -on -one tutorials too and consultations so you can 
learn from him what all the knowledge that he knows so even if you watch one of his videos I feel like you're going to learn something more from him on a one-on-one -on -one consultation because it's going to be catered to you and your needs he's going to show you how to use the makeup you've already purchased and all that so I really appreciate that and I also appreciate that he says to everybody too that that there is transformational makeup, which is, and I mentioned that already in the video, that, you know, contouring and highlighting and doing all that. I like that he specifically talked about Instagram. I, I appreciate that he talked about filters and all of that. You know, I've, I've had people tell me this on Instagram. I've had people tell me this on my channel that they're like, oh my gosh, your skin is flawless. It's not. I don't have flawless skin. Nobody has flawless skin. Anytime you think somebody has flawless skin, it's the lighting or filters people are using. I don't use filters on my camera. I don't believe in those. I don't agree with that. I personally don't agree with using filters. I know Matthias says he does some of that on Instagram. I just don't agree with that. I just have to be honest. I just don't. I just don't want anybody to ever meet me in person and think, wow, you have looked nothing like I thought you would look. And he kind of mentioned that in the video a little bit. He talked about some of the people that he had met, influencers that, you know, he would see on camera and then he would see them in person and was like, whoa. See, I don't want that. I, I want you to, if you see me in person, I look the way I do on camera that I'm not going to look different. I want you to see me the way I really am. So I, I really love Matthias. I think he's an amazing makeup artist. I think this was so much fun to do with him. I really enjoyed doing this video. Thank you so much Matthias for collaborating with me. It was so much fun to do this. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you are new here, would love to have you join. Please consider clicking that subscribe button below. I share new videos every single week. Also make sure you click that notification bell too and I will catch you guys all in my next video. Bye. <laughs> I'm having a moment. I usually keep this area with no, uh, I usually don't put any, I swear to God, I'm having a mind stroke. What was I saying? Matthias from Matthias for, no, Penny. that's not it. Matthias from,